We are ready to fight. And you're going to be sorry if you think that you are going to undermine us. We are more powerful than we ever will. The, the Supreme Court has just galvanized us into power. So get ready for us because we are coming. No peace. If we don't get no justice, you don't get no peace. Before I even became a city employee, I suffered through discrimination, disparate treatment, even in the hiring process, being forced to provide 12 references, being forced to urinate in front of who was going to be someone who's going to be my co-worker. Oh, shame! 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 shame. shame. Say it, sister. Shame. Be strong. You're a strong sister. Keep going. And at every level since I've been here, having my intelligence questioned, having my humanity challenged, being forced to work and endure indignities no one should have to suffer through. I am San Francisco. Yes! yes. 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 I am yes. Bayview Hunters Point. Yes. yes! This is my community. Yes. yes! I don't come here and just represent the city and county. I represent every African American, every black person in this community that's right. Amen. Who just wants a fair shot at the American dream. Right. Amen. 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 Yeah. All I want to do, all I've ever wanted to do, was serve my community with dignity. Yeah. Amen. Right. And to have my dignity stripped away in pieces every single day by people in positions of power. Right. It's not fair. It's not right. And it will not be tolerated. No! Yeah. No! No! No justice! No, no peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! That's why it's very important for unions like SEIU, Local 1021, yes. for Local 21, yes. who has members here, yes. to stand up when you see injustice yes. anywhere. Stand up. Yes. Right. yes. Call them out. Amen. Tell them this will not be tolerated. Yes. We are all human beings right. worthy of dignity right. and humane treatment. Amen. Right. That Amen. is all we can ever ask for. All, And we should not even have to ask no. for it. No. Right. Those are human rights. Human rights. It's okay. It's okay. We got you. And to tolerate this, to swallow my pride, so I can provide for myself and my family, and go home every night in tears. Because I can't fight for myself. Because I live in fear that if I bring anyone else into this, they will be harmed. As my shop steward was harmed. He was assaulted by a fellow employee in front of the chief medical examiner, Dr. Michael Hunter. Ooh. Michael Hunter! The medical examiner apparently has a TV show. Oh, it's on the Reels Network. It's uh, um, autopsy, last hours of. And he reads autopsy reports of celebrities who have passed in uh, other jurisdictions. Do you think the city should be, you know, investigating this? Well, I don't know if they should investigate, but they do have to approve secondary employment. This is secondary employment, so somebody probably should take another look at that, I think. On top of his salary, he's making another salary with it. Yeah, he's pulling down a pretty good salary for his job as the uh, chief medical examiner, um, and I, I understand TV pays pretty well as well. Even I, guess it, I guess it's a good gift. Brenda Barrows. Um, what's here happening today? We have an employee here who's an African-American woman who is being terrorized by the management here. And one of the, Jesse, who is one of the stewards, who's been trying to help her, he's even been physically attacked. So this is very serious and we cannot tolerate this. And isn't that illegal? It is illegal. But you know, unfortunately, they work for people that carry guns. So it's very difficult to hold them accountable. But we're going to try our best to hold them accountable. We already have this issue of being attacked on pretty much every level. We're being attacked by the uh, federal government. We're being attacked by multiple different employers. 
We do not need these attacks taking place here in the city and county of San Francisco. Is that right? Yes. And we will not allow it. We will not allow. Okay. And uh, you think he's going to get the message here today? I hope so, and I hope change, positive change comes from this. We as city employees, we are the life's blood of this city. Without us, without the rank and file, nothing functions. Because management is not going to take over and do the work that we're doing. But they do reap the benefit of it. The city reaps the benefit of our hard work. The least they can do is treat us with humanity and respect and the dignity that we deserve. This atmosphere of intimidation and threats, people are terrorized. I mean, it must cause health problems for people. Well, uh, yeah, and and it's um, you know our work is important. I mean, it, it disrupts the work that we do. I mean, the day-to-day the -day work that, that we want to be doing, that we that we signed up to do, and we want to do, uh, is disrupted by by this intimidation and harassment. A lot of people I know in the city have ended up going off on disability because of stress and pressure. Is that a problem that you know of? I mean, people going off on disability. That that would definitely be a problem. Cost the city money. It seems like it would. And the worker. <laughs> And it disrupts the de operation. I mean, it disrupts the the day-to-day -day operation of, of doing the business of the people of the city and county of San Francisco and the office of the chief medical examiner. Can I just speak to that? The work that we do, especially here at the office of the chief medical examiner, we work very intimately with the community. We're dealing with people who have lost loved ones in this city and in the surrounding area. We have so much dedication and passion for what we do, regardless of any title. We are public servants, and a part of our duty is to have care for the community that we're serving. And the fact that harassment, discrimination, union bashing has taken precedence over our duty to the community is a shame and it's a disgrace to everyone in San Francisco. You think the medical examiner cares about that? I mean, it seems like if he's spending all his time allowing the kind of harassment going on, what does that mean to the community here who expect, you know, some, you know, professional treatment and love and warmth? I, I honestly can't speak to, to his mindset, but as a member of this community and of this neighborhood, it's very disturbing. Because when I walk through those doors as a city employee, I'm walking in also as a member of this community. And to be able to do my job effectively, to provide the level of support and care that I bring to my work here, and to constantly be harassed and bashed under the auspice of this office, it's intolerable and our community will not tolerate it. We've suffered enough. All we ask is that you treat us with dignity and respect, that you treat our loved ones with dignity and respect, that you interact with us on a human level. That's all we've asked for. And I, I asked the uh, staff here if they had uh, any comments. They said no comment. There was somebody from HR, Mickey Callahan's office. Do they know about this? It's been told to them. Grievances have been filed, so I don't know how they can say they don't know. They know. Yeah. The other thing is the union has been asking for records of systemic discrimination. Uh, what's the city, uh, Mickey Callahan, the city? Well, so, far, so far, they've been refusing to give it to us. We've asked for it over and over and over again. Over the last two years, we've been asking for it. Aren't these public records? Give it to us. Aren't they public records? They're saying that they don't collect that data. And we don't believe it because I've seen it one time about four years ago as a part of BAHI, which is the Black American Health Initiative in Public Health. So I've seen it broken down by classification. So it's really disingenuous for the city to say they don't have it. Is there a reason you think they would say that? I think because the numbers are going to look so bad and they don't want to be embarrassed because we know from being out in the working world, if employees or people in the public just walk into any public office and you look around and see what you see and it's very clear. And the medical examiner apparently here is a, is a TV star as well. Uh, he has a TV show that he does as medical examiner. What, what? Yeah, so I think he maybe he needs to get one occupation and, you know, leave being a supervisor to somebody else. He's an appointee? He's an appointee. Of the mayor? Of the, of the previous mayor, yes. So it's my hope now that, you know, London Breed, I hope she's watching this, 
and get rid of this guy because he's a he's a nuisance and he's going to cause problems. I mean, this kind of atmosphere of terror, what does that mean to the African-American workers who work here and other African-American I mean, people, Black people go through trauma in life just being black anyway. So to have to deal with it out in the streets, have to deal with it while, when you're going to school, have to deal with it, you should not have to deal with it in the workplace. It is against law. So they're breaking laws and they're not being held accountable. We want them held accountable. We want the law followed. When people discriminate, there has to be a consequence. And I've said it before in different rallies. It's like, it's okay if they try to work with these people, but at a certain point, if they can't change or they don't want to change or they're so racist they can't change their behavior, they need to go. So you're going to call, you are calling on London Breed, the new mayor-elect, to remove the uh, chief medical... calling on London Breed, the new mayor, to remove all managers and department heads who do not want to create a colorblind San Francisco, which is what we all want to get to. But unfortunately, because of people's behavior, we're not there. No. We have to worry about color. I have to worry about my black co-workers because they're abused so much. Latinos are abused too. Um, even Asians, are, everybody's abused. But a majority and the brunt of the disciplines and everything else is toward black employees. And the kind of harassment you have on the job in many cases leads to workers going on disability, workers comp, uh, it's costing the city money. There have been million dollar lawsuits of illegal discrimination, bullying of employees. I mean, it is costing the people of San Francisco a lot of money. In addition, oh, I'm sure it's causing them a lot of money in lawsuits. There's tons of people that go off on stress because they can't take it anymore. And so all these things impact the services they get because then that impacts the staffing. And so they need to fix it. They need to get rid of these people so that people can come to work and be happy at work. You know, nothing is 100% perfect. Nobody's expecting that. But nobody should have to deal with racism on the job. San Francisco is a union town. Rise up! Shut it down! San Francisco is a union town! You can do it. Can we, can we go in with you? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. fine. We'll go okay. inside with you. All right. We'll leave it inside. Right. Yes. Right there. Yeah, appreciate yeah. you guys. No one... Roll it up. Take it off the board. Roll it up. <laughs> Take a picture of that. We delivered it in here, sister. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Hold They're down. too scared to come down, so we're leaving it here, in their office. All right. No courage. They have no class, no courage. An injury to one is an injury to all. An injury, injury to one is an injury to all. My name is David Canham. I'm the San Francisco director for SAIU 1021. And what's happening here today? Well, what is this place? We're having a, we have a protest uh, today to protest the, um, you know, two major incidents that we have a problem with. One was a f the physical assault of one of our members by uh, a co-worker and management clearly condoned that assault, did nothing about it, uh, and in fact just trivialized it and it's not, we are not aware of any measures they have taken to deal with the, with the incident. And uh, there's a general atmosphere of uh, hostility that's been created by management in the department. We also have a, 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 a pro an incident where we have a young African-American member who literally was being micromanaged to the point of being harassed every two hours. She had to check in. They had to check in with her and ask her what she was doing and why she hadn't done something fast enough and what she. Would. So they were spending. They they are spending more time just micromanaging her rather than doing their own jobs to the point where it's clear that they want her to probably quit. And so we had to, to, to support her and defend her. In, she's also been subjected to the most outrageous uh, background information when they hired her. That they what did they done. do? Well, what did they ask her? Uh, an example, you could ask her as well, but they've, they've literally went to her house and to a neighborhood with a blown up picture of her asking neighbors if they knew anything about her, what, did they, what they knew about her, literally criminal, criminalizing her. It's the National Security Agency. That's exactly right. Was she applying to work for the CIA? I mean, it's outrageous. They've never done this to any city worker that we represent. And they claim that that's the measures they're taking to tighten up the hiring practices. But it's just outrageous. Even DHR, when we contacted the city management, they knew nothing about it. So they just took their own initiative to create this 
outrageous system now that, uh, you know, to subject some of our members to. And in fact, it's two African-American workers only in this department that have been subjected to that, or the entire city. And they have a lot of police inside, sheriffs from the sheriff's department on the roof. What are they expecting? Uh, uh, sheriffs on the roof and a lot of sheriffs inside. What are they expecting here? I guess maybe they think we're going to show up armed. I guess I don't. I have no idea why they're taking such extra security. I mean, we are no, we are here to protest peacefully, just like we always do. And so you're saying that when you brought this information to them about discrimination, about workplace bullying, and that we kind of thing, we brought it to the head of the department. We brought it to Naomi Kelly. We brought it to DHR, the city bosses. And as of now, I mean, I know that the department has said they're looking into the complaints. So I do trust that Naomi will take this seriously and will look into it. But we want to make sure that they actually, you know, something happens, that this stops. This kind of hostility in this department has to come to an end. And is this unique or is this going on in other departments? It has, it is happening in other departments for sure, but this is so outrageous that is happening here. Other departments are smarter, you know, they're not so blatant in terms of harassing. They don't assault people on the job. And how was this person assaulted? Uh, he was physically assaulted. They, a co-worker put hands on him, put his hands on him. And uh, the management knew about that? Yeah. It was the attention immediately. And what happened to this guy? Nothing that we know of. So they allowed somebody to be assaulted? In fact, they, yeah, in fact, they said to him, we're tired of this union shit, because he's a union steward. You know, the comments like that were made about, you know, we're tired of this union shit of yours. Isn't that a violation of labor law? That is absolutely. We have a charge filed with PERB. We actually, actually have a PERB charge filed. To actually physically threaten somebody who's a union representative? Literally say, first of all, assault a union steward, and then say, we're tired of your union shit. It's outrageous. Uh, the, Chief examiner, uh, medical examiner, is he appointed? The chief. Or is, or is he? Uh, I think this. Hired. I think he's hired by the city. Yes, he's not elected. Yes. By the by the mayor. Have you brought this up with the new mayor, uh, London? Not yet. Not yet. Not Are you going to? We hope to bring it to their attention. Yes, because you know we have a hearing at City Hall, July 18th, around the broad, you know, discrimination and mistreatment, especially of African American workers in the city. That hearing is coming up in July. We've asked. Now, I understand you're asking for information from the city about uh, records of discrimination, harassment of uh, African, particularly African-American employees, disciplines, and the city is saying that they can't provide that information? Yeah, they're dragging their feet. They, they have not given us any affirmative response that says we're going to work with you on this. So we, that's why we want the hearing and hopefully pass legislation that compels them to actually track how people are being disciplined, who's being disciplined, who's being promoted, who's not being promoted, who's being separated from probation, you know, who's being hired into certain classifications. We want to, to clearly see what's happening in all of these departments and they seem reluctant to work with us. Isn't that public information? I mean, it's like not secret. It's, I mean, it's, it, it's it is actually, actually Mickey Callahan issues a report every five years, but the report is so generic that you never get to see what's really happening in terms of hiring trends, and it doesn't include the disciplines and who's being separated and mistreated. We want to know that too. We want those reports. And there's also an issue of uh, this workplace bullying leading to di uh, people going out on workers' comp disability, costing the city a lot of money. There have been millions of dollars spent on people illegally fired because of bullying. I mean, is this, do you think it's costing the people of San Francisco a lot of money, the treatment of the workers? I think it's in everybody's interest to make sure that if if managers, if people in, different, in the departments know that somebody, people are going to be looking at reports, they'll probably be uh, reluctant to mistreat people. So that's our goal, to limit. It's not going to go away, but at least we will look at trends and look at where the problems are. Now, Mickey Callahan is the head of the Department of Human Resources. Uh, the head of the Civil Service Commission, Jennifer Johnston, is married to uh, the Sean Ellsberg, who's just been appointed as a uh, chief of staff of London Breed. You think you're going to get a fair hearing? It seems civil like the civil, civil service. service. I mean, the civil service apparently knows about it. Right. They're responsible for oversight of what's happening with the civil service. Right. I think you should ask the mayor that. <laughs> I mean, they already have, we have had problems with that body in terms of fairly adjudicating problems that we brought to their attention. So you might want to go ask Landon Reed if she's aware of that and what she thinks about that. That's a question for the new mayor. I think so. Yeah. Are you going to be raising that in an inauguration? Very, well, civil service, that's a whole other campaign that we need to look at because, yes, we've, we've had, members have raised concerns about whether that body is really fair and whether they really listen to workers' complaints and uh, take them seriously.
because you know they're kind of a body that operates you never know what they've investigated you never really find out what they've decided what they, they don't make reports and surveys of, well, of the ask, work but you can ask but it's not an open body it's definitely not civil service no it's not <laughs> Now, also, lastly, on, on Janus, uh, there's this Janus decision which uh, basically outlaws agency shop and they want to eliminate, really, union membership. That's the, the end game. Uh, what effect do you think that will have in San Francisco with the working people here, the public workers in San Francisco? You know, uh, for, for I, I won't be able to speak for everybody, but for our local, we've been spent. We've sp for the last three years now, we've been making preparations for that. You know, signing people up and reminding people why the union matters, what the union difference is, and what we've gained over the decades since we've workers have been unionized. So, majority of our workers get that this is an attack on working families. They get that this is an attack. You know, this is an agenda against not just workers but everyone. This comes on the heels of, you know, the decision about uh, the upholding the Muslim ban. And, you know, who's next? They're probably going to come after banning abortions. I mean, it's just a non-stop, continuous attack. It doesn't seem like the Constitution means much. With this no, not at all. Not with this, not with this group. <laughs> they have a problem with the Constitution, actually. I mean, it's uh, Muslims, I mean, discrimination. Yeah, right. Immigrants, Muslims, workers. Who's next? Right. Gays. So you know? what do you think the response of the unions nationally is going to be to this? And uh, Because it, uh, the public workers are the largest percentage of organized workers in the United States, and obviously weakening public workers would, would weaken the entire labor movement. I mean, honestly, I think that uh, it's unfortunate that there isn't more outrage uh, from the public, from our workers throughout the country, but I think that's coming. I think they'll, you know, we're not going to let, we're not, we're not going to take this lightly. It's going to make us more militant. It's going to make us more uh, proactive. more proactive. Yes, I think it's going to change how we operate. It's going to change. It, it, we, it has to, right? Because we're going to have to operate now outside of the normal, tried and tested uh, strategies that we've utilized. Now, SEIU has more than seven hundred thousand members in California. It's the largest union right. in California. Uh, are there any plans for any united action by all the members of SIU in California? We're talking in San Francisco of possibly uh, organizing a, a, a an event, a protest that would involve all unionized workers and invite allies and other organizations to participate, most likely sometime in July. Hopefully, maybe Labor Day will be the day. We're not sure yet. We're still in talks about that. So it's coming. No peace. If we don't get no justice, you don't get no peace. If we don't get no justice, you don't get no peace. No justice, no peace.